If I start all over again in processing my exceptional hardship waiver with my US citizen husband, this is what I'm gonna do. So let's dive in and let the journey begin. Hello everyone, good day from Central Florida, USA. My name is Emery and welcome to Powerful Couple Journey where we show you our random activities here in the United States of America. So you fell in love with a US citizen and you got married or about to get married. If I have to start over again, this is what I'm gonna do. I am a previous J1 teacher with 212 e rule and now I got my green card through exceptional hardship waiver with my US citizen spouse and we are now happily married for more than three years and I'm so thankful that I can share my experiences on how we did it because this is a do-it-yourself process so I hope that you're gonna be with us and this is gonna be a series that I'm gonna be presenting here that way you'll also have a chance to take note of the things that we did and hopefully it will apply to your real life situation the first thing that I'm gonna do is to look at my DS 2019 and my visa stamp that way I would know if I am really subject to 212 e rule which is a two-year home residency requirement if you are a J1 teacher most especially if you're from the Philippines we are really required to do the two-year home residency requirement if you are unsure of that you can ask for an advisor opinion with the Department of State that will be through their website and I'm gonna put here in the description that way you'll also be guided on the right website that you're going to be using. It is important to know that you are a subject and the case number that you're going to be getting from the Department of State will also be used for your application with the DS-335 which is the waiver that you're going to be sending to the Department of State. There are a lot of information that I'm going to be sharing to you. This is going to be like an introduction of everything because I'm going to do a step-by-step -step process and a series of videos that way you will really know how it works for us hoping it will also be helpful to you with your advisor opinion you are able to know if you are subject or not subject to the two-year home residency requirement most of us wouldn't want to go back to the Philippines, especially if we already established our lives here with our U.S. citizen spouse. It's heartbreaking to know that even though you got married, it is still imposed and required to us as J1. And we know that already. We signed that contract and we see that in our visa. But good thing there is a waiver and if you got married to a US citizen, the first one you would like to try is the exceptional hardship waiver. Before the no objection statement is given priority, if you got married to a US citizen, in particular, if it's a Filipina or an American marriage, then it's like automatic. But right after pandemic, they no longer do that with the exchange visitor program. So a lot of us are really trying to know what are the steps or how can we combat the 212E rural home residency requirement, then you can try exceptional hardship waiver. Some of us did persecution and there's another process for that, but what I can only vouch is the exceptional hardship waiver since we try that and we are successful in doing that through a do-it-yourself process. The other thing that I would like to do if I start over again is to sit down with my spouse or to sit down with my fiance, which is a US citizen. The reason for that is some of them are not knowledgeable enough about J1 and they just thought that since they are a US citizen, it's like automatic. You can 
submit all your papers with the USCIS and they can petition you and you can adjust status. So it's not that easy if you are a J1 and like a J1 teacher, there are a lot of processes that you need to take. So sit down with them, let them know, show them your DS 2019 if possible or your visa. Be open to them, talk to them about it. And if you would like to have your immigration lawyer, that is very good because you're going to be guided. Disclaimer, I am not an immigration lawyer. I am just sharing based on my experience. And whatever information you get here, you can use this as a guide. But it's not guaranteed that your case will also be successful just like what we have. Because each case is unique with the USCIS. So we are dealing here with immigration. And all the processes is going to be very difficult if you don't know where to start when I was starting my process I keep on researching on YouTube on Google but there's not a lot of information really but now I am so thankful that we have a group which is a J1 waiver helping hands group that I created where we are sharing our ideas there like what are the steps how can we apply how can we get our j1 waiver and there are different nationalities there even though it's most likely dedicated for filipinos that are here in america but we are open i am open to all nationalities this platform is really wanting to help you succeed in your j1 waiver application you have to strategize with your american citizen husband or fiance on how to start with your process, with the evidences, what are the things that you would like to show to the immigration officer and review division officer that your relationship is legit and you are not just playing around or using each other to gain advantage of taking that permanent resident card which we call a green card so be honest sit down read all the information all the forms that i'm going to be showing here because these are very important and i'm going to let you know what are the steps that i did what are the stumbles or struggles that i have and hoping that it will be a smoother process for you because the agony of waiting really hurts us and hoping that you will have to have a bag of patience load of patience when it comes to the processing and always look at the timeline use the application tracker which they have with the uscis because it will really help you and every time you see mail in the, your mailbox with the uscis is like yay it's like something that you're going to be excited because you see that your process is going to be rolling this is a case-to-case -case basis again, hoping that you're going to be following along. Leave a comment on the comment section below if you have any other questions that I can answer. And hoping that we can also share ideas here because, again, this platform is really to help you and to navigate you what are the steps that are going to be needed in the process through exceptional hardship waiver after we strategize what we're gonna do i would really wanted to think of the timeline and think of the process when to start the exceptional hardship waiver and you're in your first year as a j1 like for example if you're a j1 teacher establish your relationship first do not submit right away the reason for that is have an rfe or request for evidence before because i submitted right away right after we got married and they said that our marriage is very young and why did i submit those forms and because of that i need to give them a lot of evidences and it's not good so if you're in your first year gather all information gather all evidences stack them put them in a box read them label them whatever you want as long as you know that those are the evidences that you're going to be submitting once you are done with your first year as a j1 you have to establish that you are here 
not because you wanted to get married to a US citizen. You are here to work, you are here to give to your family, helping your family and helping yourself to grow. We have to be very honest here. That's the reason why we wanted to explore the world. We wanted to better ourselves, become well-rounded with the things that are happening in our world. And the US is really a good country to know about all of those and enjoy what is given in this first world country. I'm so blessed that I'm here in America and I'm able to share this experience with you. In your second year and if you already read your evidences or you are ready to submit then submit your papers that's where you have to submit all of these forms and we're gonna know which one to submit first that way you will be guided on what are the things that is really necessary at first again I'm not an immigration lawyer. This is just me sharing my experiences. Why do I have to say it over and over again? Because I wanted to have a disclaimer and disclosure here in this video. I do not want you to rely on just my videos. Look at other J1 visa holders that have videos that are sharing how they did it. They were able to get their waiver as well. Again, as a Filipina, this is my passion to help you. And as a previous school teacher, I know the struggles. I know that there's gonna be expenses along the way with immigration papers. So just remember, if you wanted to have an immigration lawyer, that's very good because you're gonna be guided. If you feel that you wanted to do it yourself, then it's really up to you and hoping we could help you with this one. So we hope that this video will help you to think on how to start your J-1 waiver through exceptional hardship with your U.S. citizen spouse and please follow along this series of videos that I'm going to be showing you and we're going to be talking about what are the things that you could fill into your forms. This is a case-to-case -case basis. I'm just going to be sharing what are the generic or the general information that way you know how to start we don't need to be spoon-fed you have to do your own research because again this is going to be your paper this is going to be your information that you're going to be defending and submitting with the uscis and the department of state thank you so much for tuning in if you feel that this has given you information please leave a comment subscribe share this video and we hope to see you here as we go along together with our process again don't forget j1 waiver helping hands group agree to group rules and you'll be accepted immediately and we have a website that is showing you what are the steps we did and hoping that we could talk with you soon and hoping that this is going to be a platform that could help you navigate your J1 to green card. Thank you so much and have a great day. God bless. See you on our Exceptional Hardship Waiver Series. God bless everyone.